So, hola, Mr. McAllister, thank you so much. Muchas gracias por being here with uh, us in El Confidencial. It's a pleasure. Um, we are going to start with some questions about Brexit. Um, the UK unilaterally uh, announced a few days ago a grace period on uh, border checks on agri food products entering Northern Ireland. How should the European Commission react to that? And uh, do we have to get used to this uh, repeated provocation or violation of the agreement by London in the near future? We are following the recent developments in London with concern. Why? The withdrawal agreement including the crucially important protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland, needs to be implemented by both sides. And this is a clear violation of the withdrawal agreement, of the protocol, and that means also it's a clear violation of international law. So the European Commission is now checking what kind of legal measures we could take. This is all very unfortunate, and I would always tell my British friends in London this is all unnecessary, it's unhelpful, and it's also untimely because this is happening at a moment where we in the European Parliament are still scrutinizing the agreement and we still have to give our final consent. Negotiations over nationalism of vaccine or export bans are the last row between Brussels and London. What is your stake, your position, or your opinion on that? Those companies who have received EU financial support in developing these new vaccines and who are, have committed themselves to deliver to EU member countries, so of course they have to fulfill all their commitments. So I think this is more about what AstraZeneca is doing and still has to do, and it's less, from my point of view, uh, controversy between the United Kingdom and the European Union. Should Member State follow Italy's step and block in more segments with vaccines? Well, this was the first step indeed. Uh, I think other steps might follow. Uh, this is not very easy to handle and this can have repercussions. But on the other hand, just as other countries and other parts of the world, we also in the European Union have to take certain measures to protect our economic and health interests. Uh, I think you met uh, Mr. Borrell uh, a few days ago here in the European Parliament after this uh, controversial trip to Moscow. What, uh, according to you, should have been done better in this uh, trip? As regards Russia, our relations with Russia are at a new low. And this is, from my point of view, unfortunate. Russia is a neighbor, Russia is a difficult neighbor, but still Again and again, the European Union has reached out to try to improve the relations. But obviously, Putin's Kremlin is not interested in having normal, proper relations with the European Union. You seem to have the impression that Mr. Putin and his friends in the Kremlin are afraid of any kind of democratic influence in their country. And we have to make clear that Russia, for us, is a strategic competitor with fundamentally different views on the rule of law, on human rights, on freedom of speech and media, just to name a few important values for us in the European Union. Should the European Union buy the Russian vaccine, uh, Sputnik, and uh, what would be the geopolitical consequences of doing so? I'm interested to see if Sputnik is actually good enough to match our requirements. If in the end a good Russian vaccine can help to overcome the pandemic quicker, then we should give it a try. But in dealing with Moscow, you always have to bear in mind that, unfortunately, Mr. Putin is also using vaccine as an instrument of Russian diplomacy, as you can follow in some countries in our immediate neighborhood. Actually, President Michel has recently blasted China and Russia over vaccine propaganda. Are the vaccines an opportunity for, for diplomacy worldwide or are they an instrument uh, for disruption? Well, in a more broader picture, I would say that this pandemic has once again 
shown the geopolitical, geostrategic shifts we are facing in the third decade of the 21st century. Russia and China have both used the pandemic to try to increase their global influence through many, many different channels. I was already talking about spreading fake news and disinformation, undermining confidence and trust of citizens in Western countries towards their own governments. Uh, we are observing this very carefully and these issues need to be addressed. And of course, uh, what you can see is that whenever Russia and China try to support other countries, they always combine this with very much propaganda, trying to show the world how helpful they are. But in dealing with Russia and China, you always know they do nothing without any reason. And what they do is always also politically motivated.